everyone and welcome once again to Worship at Home with the Camborne Cluster of Churches. Today I am in All Saints Tucking Mill and what a great timing to know that this beautiful organ behind me is going to be played once again in this awesome place. So thank you so much for having me here at Tucking Mill. So welcome in the name of Christ. God's grace, mercy and peace be with you. Faithful one, whose word is life, come with saving power to free our praise, inspire our prayer and shape our lives for the kingdom of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
Jesus saw the city and wept over it because it did not recognise the time of God's coming. We confess our part in the self-centeredness, blindness and sin of the life of our community. God of mercy, we acknowledge that we are all sinners We turn from the wrong that we have thought and said and done and are mindful of all that we have failed to do. For the sake of Jesus, who died for us, forgive us for all that is past and help us to live each day in the light of Christ our Lord. Amen. And may God our Father forgive us our sins and bring us to the eternal joy of his kingdom where dust and ashes have no dominion. Amen.
What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. Today's reading is taken from 2 Corinthians, chapter 12, verses 2 to 10. I know a person in Christ who 14 years ago was caught up to the third heaven. Whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows, and I know that such a person, whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows was caught up into paradise and heard things that are not to be told, that no mortal is permitted to repeat. On behalf of such a one, I will boast, but on my own behalf, I will not boast, except of my weaknesses. But if I wish to boast, I will not be a fool, for I will be speaking the truth. But I refrain from it, so that no one may think better of me than what is seen in me or heard from me, even considering the exceptional character of the revelations. Therefore, to keep me from being too elated, a thorn was given me in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me. To keep me from being too elated, Three times I appealed to the Lord about this, that it would leave me. But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for power is made perfect in weakness. So I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may dwell in me. Therefore I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions and calamities for the sake of Christ. For whenever I am weak, then I am strong. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Gospel reading is taken from Mark chapter 6, reading from verses 1 to 13. The rejection of Jesus at Nazareth. He left that place and came to his hometown and his disciples followed him. On the Sabbath, he began to teach in the synagogue and many who heard him were astounded. They said, where did this man get all this? What is this wisdom that has been given to him? What deeds of power are being done by his hands? Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, and brother of James, and Joseph, and Judas, and Simon, and are not his sisters here with us? And they took offence at him. Then Jesus said to them, Prophets are not without honour, except in their hometown, and among their own kin, and in their own house. And he could do no deed of power there, except that he laid his hands on a few sick people, and cured them, and he was amazed at their unbelief. The Mission of the Twelve Then he went about among the villages, teaching. He called the Twelve and began to send them out, two by two, and gave them authority over the, clean, over the unclean spirits. He ordered them to take nothing for their journey except a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in their belts, but to wear sandals and not to put on two tunics. He said to them, wherever you enter a house, stay there until you leave the place. If any place will not welcome you and they refuse to hear you as you leave, shake off the dust that is on your feet as a testimony against them. So they went out and proclaimed that all should repent. They cast out many demons and anointed with oil many 
who were sick and cured them. friend of mine was visiting from Canada once and it seemed to me like every second sentence had the word amazing in it. Everything was amazing. He saw something wonderful, something uh, great happen and it was amazing. Then someone cut him up in traffic and it was, that guy was amazing. I think he could do with uh, expanding his vocabulary a little bit on these things. It could have been astounding, gobsmacking, um, astonishing, all of these different things, but it was amazing for him. I wonder what amazes you. Did you know that Jesus was amazed? Jesus was astounded and only twice in scripture do we hear about it. Both times it was to do with faith. The first time we hear about it in uh, Luke chapter 7 and and Matthew chapter 8, where there's a centurion, a a, a Gentile, an outsider, whose um, servant is ill, and Jesus is amazed at the faith of this centurion. The other time that we hear about Jesus being astounded is this passage, in this passage of scripture in Mark chapter 6 where Jesus is astounded, astonished, amazed, gobsmacked at the lack of faith in a place where you ought to be able to find it. It was amazing that there was no faith where there ought to have been faith. It was amazing that there was faith where you'd least expect it in the centurion. And here, Jesus is gobsmacked, left speechless, perhaps, at the the unbelief of the people in his hometown. Familiarity breeds contempt, so the saying goes. Perhaps it wasn't contempt as such, but there was no uh, no ability to put their trust in who Jesus is and to receive the fullness of all that he has to offer because they lacked faith. Do we lack the faith that we need to see all that we could see Jesus do. With faith, so much is possible. With faith, so much is possible. Will we astound Jesus with our fullness of faith? Will we astound Jesus and our lack of faith? Will we learn to move beyond belief, believing with our heads, uh, to fully relying on God, leaning on Jesus. That's what faith is. It isn't a a, a, a conscious assent. It isn't a mental belief. It's a fully relying on, leaning on, trusting in, having faith in Jesus. And astounded as Jesus is, he doesn't give up his call. He doesn't give up his mission Uh, here to this part of the world. In fact, he does something here in Mark's gospel that he has not to date yet done so far. He sends out his disciples. He doubles down on his mission and says, well, this is is a mission that I came to share. This is a mission that I came to, uh, to, to give to my disciples. And so he does. He sends them out. He sends them out two by two. He sends them out not only as messengers to be ones who carry the the words of eternal life, not only uh, heralds of the coming kingdom, but ones who are given power and authority, authority over demons, authority over evil spirits, authority to take this joyful message, this good news, this wonderful, astounding news of the, of the coming kingdom of God and of the saving grace of Jesus, to take this message to the darkest places of our broken world. They're given authority to do so. And they're given authority to do so not in a, not in a way of uh, coming over the people that they are, are seeking to reach, but coming alongside them, 
They're not called, they're not given instructions to, to stand at the street corners or in the marketplaces and, and preach and proclaim from there. They're not called to go and teach on the hillsides. They're called to go and be guests of those they're seeking to serve. To go and be guests, to go and, and sit at the table with the people in these villages that Jesus is sending them to. Go as guests. And he says it to them. He says, take no bag, no money, no bread. Take nothing for your journey. Only rely on. This is the implication. Rely on the hospitality of those that you're meeting. And rely on the grace of God. Those that we've been sent to we're sent to go as guests, to go and be with them, alongside them. Elsewhere in scripture, in, in Luke chapter 10, Jesus sends out uh, disciples again. He sends out 70, 72. And he, he says to them specifically in this place, he says, eat what is put in front of you. Eat what is put in front of you. Again, the implication being it might not be to your liking. You are not the hosts in this place. You are the guests. And good guests eat the meal that's set in front of them. For the disciples, that might have meant going to places where they couldn't be quite sure that the religious laws, that the, the, the Levitical laws had been followed to the letter. They might be dubious about some of the things that have been put in front of them. It might be food that's not religiously clean. Jesus says there's something more important right now than, than doing the, the right thing by these sacrificial laws. And that's doing the right thing by receiving hospitality of the people that you are seeking to reach and to serve. But, he says, if they don't want to know, if they're not ready to receive, if they don't want to, to receive the joyful message that you bring to them, then Jesus is clear. Jesus' message is wipe your feet on the way out. I often ask my children to wipe their feet on the way in because outside is dirty, inside is clean. Let's keep it that way. Wipe your feet on the way in. Here, the message is that. Same message in reversal. And it's stark. You are, you are to be guests. You are to be polite. You are to, to receive the food put in front of you and the hospitality of those who are your hosts. But if they want to reject Jesus and his message, if they're not going to receive the message or you, then wipe your feet on the way out. A stark, stark message. But we're sent to be joy bringers. We're sent to be a community, aren't we? Today, the church, you and me, here as we gather, where we sit and where we uh, pray together, we are, we are a community of grace. A community of the amazed. A, commu a community of those who are astounded at what God has done for us at the lengths that Jesus went to for us. May that be what astounds and astonishes us. May we never lose the wonder of what Jesus has done for each and every one of us. And if you don't know the fullness of what Jesus has done for you, then I urge you, receive that invitation. Receive that invitation of Jesus of life and forgiveness of sins and transformation, and wholeness, and healing. All of this is what Jesus offers you, and what Jesus won for you in his death and in his resurrection. That's the message for us to receive. Let us be a community of grace, astounded and amazed at what God has done for us, and let us astound God let us astound Jesus, not at, with our lack of faith, 
Let us astound Jesus at our fullness of faith. May we have eyes to see like Jesus did and discover faith in hidden corners, unexpected places. And may we rejoice in that. This message is a message to take the gospel out into the communities, out to the places where we're called to serve. As we pray together, as we seek the Lord together, may our commitment be this, that we will go to the lost, that we will sit at table with the lost, that we will re be received by the communities that we seek to serve, not preaching a gospel from a hillside far away, but a message, the gospel that comes alongside and says it's for this household, it's for this family, it's for you. And may we continue to hold out that faith, hold out that message. And may we go empowered as those first disciples were, those first followers, those first learners. May we go out empowered and equipped with the authority to take the light to the darkness. May we go with this gospel of freedom and live it to its fullness. May we live astounded and astonished and amazed. We affirm our faith with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. <laughs>
Everlasting God, we are gathered together as a benefice and a cluster of churches in love and fellowship. Hear us now as we bring before you our prayers, our cares and our needs. So we pray for your church throughout the world, for Christians everywhere, meeting in small house groups, in rural and town churches and in great city cathedrals. Grant that we and all your people may be built up in our faith and show in our thoughts and deeds the love and compassion we see in Jesus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, we give you thanks and praise for our churches here in the Greater Camborne area, for the work of the Transformation Team, and pray for all who minister and preach and who enlarge and enrich our understanding of God. We ask for your blessings also for our faithful congregations throughout the cluster. May they always feel God's presence and his love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father God, we pray for those whom we love, family and friends, and those special people in our lives, wherever they may be. We pray for their hopes, their fears, their problems and their needs. But most of all, we thank you, Lord, for each one of them, for what they give and mean to us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Last week's Gospel reading showed the tremendous faith of a sick woman. Help us to learn from this, that we should always pray and not give up, and that if we ask, it will be given to us. So we lift to you now, healing Lord, all those who we know who need to touch the hem of Jesus' garments and receive health and healing in their lives, especially those affected in any way by coronavirus. So now, in a moment of silence or aloud, let us lift to God anyone we know in need of prayer at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your caring hands, Lord, we commit those who have recently died and pray for all those who mourn their passing. We remember all those we have loved and see no more, whose anniversaries come around this time. So again, in a moment of silence or aloud, let us mention their names to God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, we have laid before you our prayers and concerns, and now we offer you our thanks and praise for all the blessings and gifts you give us. In the weeks ahead, help us to keep the faith as deeply and passionately as we can. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's gather all our prayers from today using the prayer that Christ taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
say the prayer for today. Almighty God, send down upon your church the riches of your spirit and kindle in all who minister the gospel your countless gifts of grace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Well thank you for joining us at Worship at Home. I hope you were blessed by the service. But before we leave, let's share the peace together. We are all one in Christ Jesus. We belong to him through faith. Heirs of the promise of the spirit of peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
Today's reading is taken from 2 Corinthians, chapter 12, verses 2 to 10. I know a person in Christ who 14 years ago was caught up to the third heaven. Whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows, and I know that such a person, whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows was caught up into paradise and heard things that are not to be told, that no mortal is permitted to repeat. On behalf of such a, a one, I will boast, but on my own behalf, I will not boast, except of my weaknesses. But if I wish to boast, I will not be a fool, for I will be speaking the truth. But I refrain from it, so that no one may think better of me than what is seen in me or heard from me, even considering the exceptional character of the revelations. Therefore, to keep me from being too elated, a thorn was given me in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me, to keep me from being too elated, Three times I appealed to the Lord about this, that it would leave me. But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for power is made perfect in weakness. So I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may dwell in me. Therefore I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions and calamities for the sake of Christ. For whenever I am weak, then I am strong. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs> 